Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, 3D tracked titles behind a subject. All right, this is part two of a three part put a title behind a subject. Uh, and the first part was doing it in Premiere Pro with a static uh, view of things. In this example, I'm going to be using um, Adobe After Effects and tracking the footage, creating a 3D camera and masking out individuals over top of it. It involves two very advanced techniques, 3D tracking and masking. You gotta have a lot of patience when you're doing this. Let's have a look. So let's look at the final example here. So you can see our assassins are standing on the uh, railing and there's text that's in front of them and they're passing uh, in front of it. Um, the text is, is behind it from our view and they're passing in front of it and you can see they're knocking it out and it looks like the text is actually moving. It isn't. The only thing that's moving is a camera. If we look at our layers down at the bottom here, we have four layers. The bottom is our footage. So if we just solo that, that's the footage all by itself. Next is the text and we can't really see that because it's black text on black. And next we have the uh, masked out area. So this is a copy of the bottom. It's a duplication of the exact same footage, but with a mask. And then at the top, We've got a camera and you don't see the camera when we're viewing it here. But if we go to a two view horizontal view and you'll see this little mark right here, when we click on it, that's the tracking of the camera. So the only thing that's moving is the camera. The text is not. It's in three dimensional space. It's a little bit further back. And when the camera moves, um, the parallax that that is, is what you're looking at. The parallax meaning different movement uh, in depth. So the assassins are in the front, and the text is moving in the back. So how do we do that? Let's go back to one view and I'll take our footage and create a new comp. So I'll just drag this down to make a new comp. And in our effects and presets, I'll type 3D space C for the 3D camera tracker and drag that on. And it's now tracking the information in this uh, particular video clip. This is a very advanced thing that, that After Effects does. And it has to do two things. First, it's analyzing the clip. When it's finished analyzing the clip, it tries to solve that math information and then create a three-dimensional camera. The solve is the most important part because if it doesn't solve, it doesn't work. Um, if this fails, it could have failed for uh, several reasons. One distinct reason is um, AVC HD footage, which is DSLR footage and wide angle lenses enclosed in areas. My first test that I did on this years ago failed directly because of that. There are some limitations to all 3D camera tracking. Uh, the better the footage, the more information you're giving it, um, it will do a better job. And no, converting DSLR footage to ProRes does not make it any better. You still need good footage. So let's watch this track. And we can see um, it tracking here in the top left. <clears throat> and as soon as it's done tracking, it's going to solve the camera. There we go. And what you'll notice are these little points that are following around, these track points that are following the front and they're actually following the back. If we put the text on one of these points, the text will move closer to us and move too quickly. We want it to be as if it's behind them. Um, and the size of these points, uh, After Effects determines the, the depth of where it is. So if we look way back here, you can actually see these little tiny things are more points and we can make these points larger and not so much for the ones in the front, but the ones in the back. And we also have a target size that you see here. So when we mouse over these targets, we'll see 
we mouse over the points, we'll get these targets. And if we make the target bigger, you can see it showing up. Now, I just like to go over a target and find a target that seems to be more perpendicular. You'll see these little targets showing up and their, their uh, plane that they're on is determined by where um, After Effects thinks that camera is. So I tend to find the one that's closest. You don't have to because you can correct that after the fact. So once we have that selected, and we're just mousing over that area, right click, and you have several options, creating text, solid, null, shadow catcher. We're gonna create text and a camera. And you can see the text is very small because it's very far away. And down at the bottom, you can see it added text and it added the camera. I've already copied the text that I need. So it's much easier rather than trying to double click inside this area. If I double click the text here, it's selected in the actual uh, comp and I paste it in and there it is. It's pretty darn small. So I'm going to tap the S key for scale. And as I turn the scale up, you'll see it's right there. And I'll grab the move tool and position this. You'll notice that we have X, Y, Z coordinates. So you can actually move this along. And if it's not moving fast enough, you can hold the shift key after you start dragging. And now when the camera's moving, you can see the camera that looks like the text is moving, but it's actually the camera that was created that's moving. And you can see it's off kilter a little bit here. So if we hit the W key and we rotate this around and we can scale this up maybe a little bit bigger, position this over here. So now we've got our text locked to the scene but you'll notice that it's in front. How do we do that? Well, let's go to our original clip and duplicate this. This is the easiest way is Control D on um, Windows, Command D on the Mac, and drag this up above the text. Now we hide all the text, we've got to get rid of this. The other thing we've got to get rid of is the 3D camera effect is on the top layer. We don't need it there, so select it and tap the delete key and get rid of that. We need to mask out each one of these guys. So select the clip, grab the pen tool, and I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse, tap and hold the space bar and move this around. Now you don't have to mask out the whole area, you just have to mask out the area where the text is. So you can see in this example, the text actually is only around this area. So um, I'm going, only going to mask out a certain part of this, but I will do a little bit extra. This is uh, an operation that is quite mind numbing and you can spend days, weeks, months on working something that's very complex. Now you won't actually see the text show up until we close this path. So I'm continuing around this guy, drawing this. I'm doing this all with the pen tool. I'm not grabbing any other tools. When I hold the Alt key or the Option key on Mac, see how I can turn the corner? I'm turning the corner. Sometimes I'm clicking for a point. Most of the times I'm clicking and dragging. This is a very organic shape. Now, when I go back to the first point I made, you see the little circle show up, click. And now I have um, masked that out. So that's the first guy right there. And you can see as soon as the text starts moving, the mask doesn't move. So you actually have two options. You can draw the mask over and over again, or we can get the tracker. Now the tracker may not work um, completely with this mask, but uh, we can give it a try. Sometimes the, it works, sometimes it doesn't. And All right. 
So to track this, make sure you have it selected, tap the M key and select the mask. And you'll notice the tracker has changed. It's more simple. And if you pop this down, you can see all the different options After Effects gives you, um, which the one we want is perspective. And when we start to track this forward, you can see we're tracking the first guy and it's doing a pretty good job. If we stop this now and go back, we can see, look at that, see all of the uh, keyframes there. And if I deselect the mask, you can see there it is in front. And if you twirl the mask down, you'll notice that you have mask feather, mask opacity, and um, that's what you have to do to each one of these guys. So if I go back to my first one and we click on that, you can see there's all the mask information for each one of those guys over top. So that's how you track a title, add a title, and then mask out. It's really just a sandwich between the original footage, what you're, you're adding in, and then obscuring areas that you want to give the impression that something actually is behind them. We used a title. This could be anything. This could be a, a static image. It could be a flying saucer, a cloud, another building, a person, whatever. Whew. It's a cool effect, but let me tell you, if you're tracking information is hard, sometimes you got to work at it. And sometimes uh, working on those masks can be a little bit brutal. Um, just remember to make a mask, select the footage, and then get the pen tool and then click. If you have nothing selected and click, you're going to draw a shape. All right. So there you go. That's how you do that. I want to say thank you everyone to all your wonderful support here at Video Revealed. We really do appreciate it. And if you're new to Video Revealed, please take a moment and subscribe. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a link in the description for you to get your free 30 day trial. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.